Hi, I'm Badu from Free Fin Cal. In this video, let's talk about why the government of India is so keen on implementing uh, the uh, NPS uh, on a widespread level. Uh, in fact, uh, as you know, that since uh, April 2004, all government employees are, uh, um, are forced to enter into the NPS. They do not have the, the government uh, uh, provident fund, the GPF. And it has recently uh, asked the EPFO to accept a proposal where an employee can uh, switch from EPF to NPS. This has been on the cards for a long time, but uh, it, it, now wants, uh, it now wants to push that uh, proposal ahead. Of course, uh, the EPFO has um, several representatives and it is a, it's a very troublesome organization as it is. Uh, because it wants, uh, uh, because it has its own um, uh, kind of uh, uh, strong trade union representation, um, and it has to the EPFO as an uh, as a as an office has to worry about that. Uh, the representatives uh, uh, who are asked to review this want a switch back option. That is, if a EPF subscriber wants to move over to uh, the uh, NPS then at a later time wants to come back to the EPF, they want that po that possible and they want this to be amended in, in the uh, Pension Fund Regulatory, uh, Regulatory and uh, Development Authority Act, uh, the, the PFRD Act, but uh, that's unlikely to be done and it's and it's kind of, it's, it's immature to want that, to go from a fixed income or, uh, or a, uh, what you call as um, a defined benefit scheme to a defined contribution scheme which is market linked and wanting to come back is it's silly and uh, th this is uh, just typical of the uh, entitled attitude of uh, many of us around and it is this uh, uh, mindset that is holding India back and it is actually holding the government back in terms of debt and so on that we'll talk about that of course Personally, should you, uh, if given an option, should you switch from EPF to NPS? No, you should not because the, the EPF as a structure uh, is is wonderfully in favor of the individual compared to the NPS because you can get the full amount in hand unlike the NPS where you are forced to buy an annuity and so on. Um, uh, there is also the withdrawal clauses are also the premature withdrawal clauses are also much in favor of the uh, EPF uh, rather than the NPS. But as a government, it has to uh, try and wean away uh, from the, uh, the EPFO and we are going to talk about why in this uh, uh, in this video. So that's the um, that's the latest news I'll, I'll write uh, in more detail about that. So on October 9th uh, the government announced a 5% uh, government employees and if you notice every such um, circular you'll, you'll see something extremely striking. There are 49.93 lakh central government employees currently on, on roll and 65.26 lakh pensioners. The number of pensioners are more than the actual employees. This is bizarre. Uh, and please recognize government uh, provident fund or anyone governed by the government provident fund will, uh, will have access to pay commission hikes. Uh, will have access to every DA and uh, every bonus that the government gives on certain festive occasions and whatever, whatever. Uh, and my mother, who retired in 2002, uh, she has been drawing a pension, pension uh, since then. Her year-on-year -year growth of the pension is an astounding 13 to 13 and a half percent. There is no annuity in the market that gives you that kind of increase in pension. Her pension has grown year on year at 13, 13 and a half percent. Of course, the starting pension of the government employee will be low, but the rate at which it grows is astounding. And the government will become bankrupt. That is the reason why it stopped uh, national pension scheme. And I had written about this. Sorry, I had written about this with all the excuse me. Uh, you know the links of the committee details and the, uh, the committee resolutions and so on how the power of compounding gave birth to the national pension scheme it is the power of compounding of the government debt and uh, what the government owed was astoundingly large and they realized that they had to put a stop to the uh, government provident fund uh, as a whole so uh, in 1998 there was a committee that was set up and it, no and it noted that the population of 60 plus age group 
is expected to increase by 107% between 1991 and 2016. And the senior citizens represent 9 to 10 percent of our population uh, in 1998, and that's expected to grow uh, to 13, 13, 14 percent in 2026. Of course, India is still largely a very young country, but there is a big senior citizen force, and uh, that, and much of them would have would have come from the government employee, uh, you know, mindset where they think that's the best job, and it was, you know, and therefore the for for a good amount of them, the government would have owed a quite a bit of money continuously until their death and then there is family pension to worry about. The family pension itself will also be subject to DA hikes and pay commissions and so on. My mother is also getting a family pension of my father that has also grown at a very good pace. And they expected in 1998 the life expectancy to be um, uh, you know, 15 to 20 years after retirement and that's a huge uh, you know, um, commitment from the government to keep going that. And they also realized that only 11% of the workforce, as per the 1991 census, was eligible for a pension scheme. And that's the reason why the government has been bringing in the NPS light scheme or the Atal Pension uh, Yojana, as it's called today. So even if uh, I had, I this is my estimate, of course, uh, the last bit is my estimate. I, that's probably an overestimate, so I'm not going to talk about that. So, th this is the main problem. The 7th Pay Commission had written in its uh, in its report, the total pension liability on account of the central government employees has risen from 0.6% of the GDP in 1993-94 to 1.66% of the GDP in 2002-03. And uh, this will grow, uh, so during this period it has grown at a compounded annualized growth rate of 21%. That's the government debt to GDP. And uh, Crystal report has also said that um, up to about uh, 2030 or so, uh, it will be 2.2% of the GDP, the government debt, that is the, the pension burden, pension burden alone, pension burden component of the government debt. We'll talk about the full government debt now. And then it will gradually decrease uh, only in 2050 to about 0.7% or so. So this is the reason why the government wanted the NPS by, uh, mandatorily for its uh, employees because it wanted to reduce its pension burden. It was going, uh, blowing beyond proportions. Still many government uh, servants don't understand this basic idea and they keep protesting, I want uh, GPF back. It will never come back. Simple as that. So uh, that's with respect to the pension burden. With respect to India's overall government debt. now. India's debt is, this is a report uh, by Deepu Rai in uh, India today in uh, July 2019, I think uh, on the eve of the budget or something like that. Um, this is, uh, it says uh, India's debt is 300% of its revenue. Just imagine, how can you run your household if, you're, if the amount you owe to someone else is 300 times your monthly income? How is it possible? I mean, yet we, uh, we want to be entitled, we want this, we want that, we want... Uh, we won't pay tax, we want high returns on FDs. It's just not going to happen. And India is rated as a bond, as a, as a, you know, uh, as a bond issuer. The government is rated, the, this rating is valid only for uh, international citizens. It's rated triple B. Will you buy a triple B bond? Just, just ask yourself, will you buy anything rated triple B? People run at the smallest drop of a debt fund now. And India is rated triple B. And... Um, India's fiscal, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, um, the, the fiscal deficit, excuse me, of the GDP, whereas the uh, typical median of all the triple B peer group countries shown there is only 1.9% of the GDP. So India is extremely debt heavy and it is trying in several ways to, uh, to reduce its fiscal def uh, deficit. And uh, of course, the, the central government debt has gone down since 2019 by a little by, by a little bit. The debt uh, component of the GDP has gone down from 51.5% uh, to 44.5%. It's, it's a step in the right direction. Uh, sovereign gold bonds is a, is a step in the is, is is an effort in that direction. Uh, eliminating the uh, or reducing the pension burden is, is, is a step in the right direction. The EPFO is also a step in the right direction. Uh, to reduce government borrowings, reduce government uh, debt. So, uh, sooner or later, all new employees will be forced to join the NPLs, whether they are government employees or not. The EPF will be phased out gradually. It will take a long time 
but uh, the trade unions have i mean the government has to take a strong uh, decision uh, ignoring all the trade union strikes and everything and, and go ahead and do that otherwise there's no point you can't expect a government to grow uh, i mean the country to grow if the government has so much debt it's simply uh, untenable so um, that's what i want to say in this video we must understand that everything is becoming market link everything already ppf is market link already post office savings schemes are market link everything will become market link it will uh, india is 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 still trying to move from its uh, communist leanings to a fully capitalist country fully professional cutthroat uh, capitalist country is it's not a question of whether it's good or not there is no other choice so that's what i want to say in this video